Wow, hello, nice to be here. Oh, I'm Pim. Uh, and for me, uh, never grow up is a thing that I really love. And I use it every day, even now. Uh, I love the fact of looking each day through the eyes of a child and opening my curtain and say, hey, here's the playing ground, let's play, let's see what we can discover. I want to dream about crocodiles that can jump over trees or elephants that can do the moonwalk. And I think if you think like that, then everything becomes much more relaxed and much more easier. Of course, I didn't always think that. Uh, when I was younger, I couldn't wait to grow up. Uh, I was bullied a lot at school uh, for a few reasons. I will tell just the first two. One, uh, my head was the same size then as it is now, only my body was a lot smaller. <laughs> uh, and at school, uh, I was a little bit dumb. At least the school told me, you're not so smart, you have trouble reading, writing, you need to go to a special school. Of course, uh, at that time, dyslexic was just becoming a trend, so <laughs> that was good for me. Uh, but I had to go to a special school, and they got, had three directions there. They had animal care, gardening, and floristry. In that school, again, a lot of bullying, except for the girls. I could have great conversations with the girls, so logic choice for me was I saw 27 girls go to floristry, and I thought, maybe, maybe I should try floristry. Uh, and, of course, the first two years, no floristry at all, just having fun and uh, trying to uh, experience a lot. <laughs> Didn't happen, by the way. <laughs> but um, at a certain time, I was, I think, uh, 16, 17, I saw a book of a Belgian floral designer, Daniel Ost. And as soon as I opened the book and read his words, what is good when you're dyslexic, uh, I thought, wow, this is the thing I want to do. And I thought, if he can do it, so can I. I mean, I was, of course, a little bit naive, but I thought, just follow your dreams and try to get everything out of yourself as possible. And that's basically me, that's a mini me. Uh, you can recognize the curls. Um, so for me, floristry became my biggest friend, because nature and, and, and everything in nature is honest. So you see what you get, and it's clear, and there's no bullying, there's just, of course, a little bit eaten or be eaten, but I made myself a promise when I saw uh, the book of Daniel Ost, and I said, I'm going to write a book, just one book, and I want that book just for me, in my own cupboard, and in my schooling period, everything I did was wrong, but I always kept to myself and think, thought, it can be wrong, but because I'm thinking it. So, if I'm thinking it, why should it be wrong? When teachers told me, Tim, this is the wrong color combination, I said, no, it's a great color combination. When people said, or teachers said, Pim, you're doing this wrong, I just said, how can it be wrong if I learned a lot? And I really believe in that essence, and a good florist always carries a good drill. <laughs> We, we have this, and I know floristry is, yeah, it's for girls, no. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, for me, floristry is having fun. It's trying to create everything that I think of, and of course the drill makes a little bit of noise. And the nice thing is, it can help you grow. So for me, every day is playing time, And I'm not afraid to make mistakes, because we all do that. And the nice thing about mistakes is you can learn the most valuable lessons of mistakes. So this is getting loose, so mistake? No, just had to add an extra stapler. <laughs> and as soon as we understand that we don't have to worry about mistakes, that the mistakes we make are there, and that we should be proud of the mistakes, then it becomes much more relaxed. So when I was 21, 
I still at school, I started to write my first book. And of course, when you're 21 and you're still at school, it's not good to write a book, because you have no baggage, as the teachers told me. And you should learn more and get experience. And I was just thinking, well, I'm still going to try it. So I worked on it for three year, uh, two years, because again, I was a student, didn't have a lot of money. So it took me a lot of time to make it. And a big surprise for me that the dream of having one book in my cupboard turned out to be published by Elsevier and was being sold in 30 countries. So that was a big eye-opener. <laughs> Because suddenly, I didn't was that, that little boy that was bullied a lot. I became someone that has studied and had some value to tell, and people were actually buying my book. And they wanted to read what I was writing down. And mentally, that works really good if you're dyslectic. I'm also slightly colorblind, so great. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a, I mean, a better profession, there's none. I mean, working with flowers and writing books. Uh, <laughs> but the nice thing is that that was basically my biggest uh, compliment. It's not the work, because the work for me is the easiest part. It's when people say, wow, your words really hit me, or what you're saying or what you're doing really inspires me, that makes me proud. Because this is no art for me. I think it's art when people can write a really beautiful letter. That's art. Sorry, but I'm just showing you my best side now. <laughs> and for me, floristry is breeding, it's everything. It's architecture, it's painting, it's building bridges, it's even writing. So, at a certain age, the book was published, and my name got around in the world. I started to think, I need to tell more about this. I need to tell more about what I think is cool and interesting in floristry. And of course, for me, floristry is breeding, it's everything. It's architecture, it's painting, it's building bridges, it's even writing. So, I already saw one guy making a mess with the stones, so I will just treat this as my own studio. And the nice thing is that this next month, book number seven is coming out, and I'm traveling the whole world, giving shows, a bit like this, only then, in general, they're always florists in, in the audience. <laughs> so for me, this is a bit exciting, because florists don't care if you say things wrong or your pronouncement is not right, because they care about that. But I think here, the audience is a bit more different. <laughs> so I'm trying, I'm trying to do my best. But for me, following your dreams, being the best designer, or to take it a little bit more bigger, the best person you can be is really look at the world like a child would do. Thinking everything is possible. I have a very simple philosophy, and it's really, it's, I think it's genius. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's basically, and it kept me company all my life, and it's just as simple as everything I think of, I can make, I can create, for the simple reason that otherwise I wouldn't think of it. And you have to think about that. <laughs> and the nice thing is that it's true. Because, of course, it can be difficult. You don't have the time, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the money or you have some fears, or you doubt. But those are all things we can learn, those are all things we can adjust, we can save up for the money, we can get the knowledge, we can learn. So, 
The only step then is, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to throw yourself out there in a process that's something that started in your mind? And are you not afraid to fall down, to make the mistake that maybe you need to make? Because that is the most important thing for me. So for me, making mistakes, I love it. And when I'm on stage, I try to prepare as less as possible. And sometimes, for TEDx people, they want to know, what are you going to tell? I don't know. <laughs> How are you going to tell it? I don't know. What are you going to make? I don't know. But I'm going to have fun. <laughs> Because... <laughs> The only thing that's important for me is, and it sounds a bit egocentric, is challenging myself, seeing, oh, Bim, can you create and talk in 80 minutes on this stage? And can you time it? So I'm checking the, <laughs> the clock. Uh, because then it's a challenge for me. And then I know I can grow and I can uh, get this afternoon or this evening, I can take a wine and think, wow. That was cool, because I learned this, I messed up that, but <laughs> this was cool. And for me, that's the most important thing there is, doing exactly what you want to do. So when I heard the team never grow up, I thought, wow, that's cool, because that's me. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to grow up. I only do what I like. So when people ask me, Pim, what do you do? I do what I like. And <laughs> The nice thing is that when you are in a certain way of thinking, and I like to call it an open way of thinking like a child does, then everything becomes possible. Because this is now, well, what you would call it, a floral design. But it can be, of course, a table, the way we started it. But it can also be uh, a nice building, maybe. And The nice thing is that if you have that certain way of thinking, that you can achieve anything you like. Every single dream you, you think of, every design you create, has value. And that, for me, brought me to next steps. Designing chairs, making lamps, furniture. There's not one thing that I don't like to do. And that's, of course, not always easy. <laughs> and not always, uh, as my accountant would say, smart. <laughs> Because, like a kid, I can have an idea and think, oh, that's cool, okay, gonna make it. And then, of course, that takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money. And then the other thing needs to be finished too. So, it's not always smart, financially, but <laughs> the things you get in return that are worth much more than money is so much nicer and, and almost happier place to be in. So I'm also one of the strange florists that, for example, would say, if a customer is coming, Pim, I want it like this, this and this. And then I give them a nice card of a florist, say, go to them, they will make it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Because, again, I have to like it before I do it. Because I believe if you don't like what you do, you cannot give the full 100% of your, uh, of your work, of your passion. So for me, that is the most important thing. So you see already that for someone who's uh, slightly colorblind, this is going pretty good. <coughs> And the nice thing is that because of the books and all the demonstrations that I give, And I mean, it's funny because my work brings me to Mexico, to Brazil, to India, to Taiwan, or Korea, or Belgium. <laughs> But <laughs> the nice thing is that it's, it's opening up so many doors. And I don't mean doors uh, financially, but doors in meetings, in seeing new cultures, and getting inspired by people, by new materials. And it's only more wood on the fire of inspiration. And for me, that's the most important thing. Every single day, 
I want to amaze myself. Because I know if I amaze myself that the thing I'm doing, that's bringing that amazement, has the value I need. That, that is triggering something. And being amazed, for me, is really important. Normally, if this was uh, for florists, then I would say, are there any questions? But <laughs> the nice thing is, sometimes you get questions, and well, then it's difficult to answer. So I think in this case, <laughs> in this audience, it's good that there are not, not a lot of question times. Can you explain me the quantum physics? No. <laughs> I can show you how to make a bouquet. <laughs> So for me, floristry, nature has become my biggest strength in childhood. And the thing that, of course, was my biggest struggle, dyslexic, being dyslexic and even being colorblind, is becoming my biggest strength in work. Um, because I think this, being dyslexic is the same as, for example, being deaf. Your eyesight is enhancing when you're deaf or when you're blind, your ear the, the strength of what you hear is also increasing. I think it's the same with dyslectic people. They don't get their information to words or written things. And there's the nice thing that I'm audio and visual dyslectic. So even if you say me your name, I'm like, huh? <laughs> or if you write down my phone, your phone number, or especially when I need to deliver a bouquet, what's the address? <laughs> Please mail it. <laughs> But the nice thing of being dyslectic is you look at things differently. Everything is possible, and for me, the amazement and uh, the, the inspiration of materials, people, inspiration, materials, is only taking it to the next step. Uh, of course, this is a nice design, but this way it becomes much nicer. <laughs> Um, basically, I want to be on schedule because I'm always late because I talk too much and now I'm doing this really well. Basically, for me, the most important thing is that I want to share with you in everything you do, if it's politics, if it's poetry, if it's art, whatever you do, science, enjoy and create with a smile. Because if you're not enjoying it, you're doing it wrong. And if you're not enjoying it, there's no growth. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you.